Hello, welcome to HCC Movie Makers Academy Movie Reviews. I'm Trey Dixon. I'm Stephen Bent. And the two of us just saw The Hobbit, The Battle of the Five Armies. Sorry. You gave a promise. You brought upon them only ruin and death. You've won the mountain, is that not enough? The Hobbit, The Battle of the Five Armies is part three in the Hobbit trilogy directed by Peter Jackson. It stars Ian McKellen, Martin Freeman, Evangeline Lilly, and a handful of other actors. It takes place right after the events of the desolation of Smaug, where Smaug has vacated the Lonely Mountain, and all of the armies of Middle-earth attempt to cash in on the gold hidden inside. The movie was shot on a budget of $250 million. It was shot on 48 red epic cameras, and it was filmed in New Zealand, just like his previous Lord of the Rings films. So Trey, what do you think about the movie? I think that at some point between the Lord of the Rings, The Return of the King, and The Hobbit, An Unexpected Journey, uh, Peter Jackson, or somebody who was giving Peter Jackson orders, decided that pacing wasn't important. <laughs> yeah, I agree with you. So this movie is kind of a mess. All of them are kind of a mess, really. Yeah, they really are. I mean, he took a, a, a very small book and he made like a six-hour movie. 276 pages of book would have made a really good, uh, for a fantasy epic that this is, a, a fairly good three-hour film. It would have Absolutely. Been a, it, would have, it would have panned out very well for that, but somebody decided to take this small book and turn it into three feature-length <laughs> films. That was a mistake. Um, it started with The Unexpected Journey which was bloated and overlong, and I didn't care for it at all. I think that's probably the worst one of yeah. this prequel series. The Desolation of Smaug was a step in the right direction. Not, I wasn't sold on it. I actually liked the Battle of the Five Armies the most of the three. Really? I, I think that a lot of people like the second one more. Yeah, I'm more of a fan of the second one. I think this movie exists over the other two more as its own standalone film. Mm -hmm. I think that there's a, you know, it's, it's kind of got your, your from A to Z. Now that Smaug is out of the way, we can go ahead and move into this mountain. And if you look at it from just this standpoint of a bunch of people want to get into this mountain to get this gold with a bunch of little side stories, it's a perfectly fine standalone film. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, something we should probably say is that this review is going to be packed with spoilers, I think. Absolutely. Uh, it's going to spoil the whole movie. Yeah. So, okay, now that that's out of the way... <laughs> I don't know why they didn't just kill off Smaug in the second film. I agree with you uh, 100%. I just thought they killed Smaug in this movie within 10 minutes. Yeah, he... he 10 minutes. Smaug died before the opening, cri the opening title even came up. Yeah, I just I didn't understand it. I think you could have put that in the second movie and had your cliffhanger somewhere else. You know, I, Or not even a cliffhanger at all. A lot of weird little things like that, that that happen in this movie, like things that you wouldn't expect just to come out of nowhere. There's an odd romance subplot yeah I didn't get that at all it just what's, written for what's the his movie. name pretty boy dwarf who, well yeah yeah the pretty who, boy dwarf who's in love with Kate from Lost Evangeline Lilly Evangeline Lilly yeah she, he comes up and he says I love you and this comes out of nowhere and what she the next line she should have said was was where's this coming from because that's what the audience was thinking where's this coming from oh that's right you're sort of in love with this character yeah cuz they nothing no scenes ever really built that on even in the second movie it just sort of just came out of the blue like he loved her you know and that's kind of that, that's that's well in tone with the rest of the characters i think because we don't get much of a chance to really feel anything for any of them no, that I think uh, another problem these series movies had too many dwarfs. Too many. Dwarves. I couldn't even name them all. I I couldn't even remember. Like I didn't even itchy, know there was. Is there twelve? Isn't there like twelve? Itchy, poopy, stinky, old guy, large nose guy, pretty boy dopey, guy. Dopey. dopey. No, yeah. no, that's the guy that's... with the Canadian hat that looks like the the guy that Rick Moranis played on Saturday Night Live, <laughs> or something. I don't know, but that's what he reminded me of. No, this movie has a bunch of characters that you don't care about and contrast that with the original Lord of the Rings films. I mean, they have a bit of a... I, I have a... It's, it's kind of 
an over an unfair advantage over me because when I first saw the original Lord of the Rings, I was young and I had never seen like effects like this. I'd never seen storytelling like this before. Oh, I and, thought I thought it was fantastic when I first saw it when I was just younger. It came out when I was in middle school, yeah. so I just thought they were like one of the best things ever made. And also, I'd never seen or read any of the books, so I didn't know what happened or became of any of the characters. So I cared a lot for all those people in the original trilogy. Cut to ten years later when they make The Hobbit. Do, who? What's their name? Do you even know any of their names? No, no one. Cares. All I know, all I know is the Thorn. Thorin, Oakenshield, and, and and Bilbo, and Bilbo, which yeah. by the way, I mean Bilbo had like nothing to do with this third movie. He's just there in the background. You know, it's it's and the whole thing's called the Hobbit. The Hobbit, the journey of the guy in the background. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, I think that you know when you don't have poor when you have poorly developed characters, you got to fall back on these epic action sequences, and we can't discredit these films for how they are on a technical level because Peter Jackson knows how to make a movie. He does. He, it's a really good looking film. You got really great sets, great costumes, wonderful makeup effects. Uh, another One thing that bothered me is uh, he used, I think, too much CGI in this one. Yeah, and you know, a lot of people have been unfairly comparing these 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 Hobbit films to the Star Wars prequels. Which, oh, which that's, is, that's harsh. That's it not, is not that bad. That is unwarranted criticism. He did George Lucas this one. George Lucas... These, you know, the Star Wars prequels were 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 soulless, bereft of humanity, oh, lazy films. Awful. A lot of craft went into making these movies, and I got swept up in a lot of the action sequences. They were entertaining, yeah, for the most part. I mean, it exists very well as a standalone action film, but I don't care about any of these characters. I, I felt that these movies didn't have like memorable moments like the first no. three did. No, the like, first three had like some epic moments that you remember. Oh yeah, you like know. when Bromire was getting shot with arrows. I remember seeing that. When, I thought that was amazing. When Gandalf was shooting down the Balrog in, in Moria. Yes. You shall not pass. That was Steph. one of my favorite moments in any movie, maybe. This one, I, I really I like that. Think I like of... I liked that rapid sequence. That wasn't in this movie. No, that was in the second. That was a good sequence, but this one had a. Uh, I'd say the most memorable scene was probably with Legolas. Yeah, Legolas does a bunch of skateboard tricks. And, yeah, which and, is you know, which is what he does. That's know, what his character is. Is, which is not even even in the book. You can't criticize. But I liked him. You, you, <laughs> you can't criticize this movie for lack of trying. Not know? at all. They 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 tried to make a good movie. It's just they decided to take a small bit of source material. And just drag it out into this thing that it's <laughs> to quote to quote the Fellowship of the Rings. It's like butter scraped over too much bread. <laughs> I, we all need a holiday, a very long holiday, yeah. and we may not return. Yeah, in fact, we need not to. <laughs> I I don't know. I feel like I have no interest to revisit the world of Middle Earth. Anymore. I don't think you should. No. I know there's one more book out there. I don't know what it's called. They, they shouldn't make it. No, Peter I, Jackson, I don't think he will. I hope not. Peter Jackson should go on and make another movie. You know, a different, different, completely different movie. Because like, take a break. He needs to take a break. Really, a little he bit needs of time. To on. just think about these Hobbit movies and just see how they they just weren't his best. So I, I feel like we've kind of we've kind of poo pooed on this movie a little bit more than was because we do sort of enjoy this movie. Be yeah, I, mean, I agree. There are some parts I did enjoy. I mean, I wasn't. Bored with it? Technically, it's a really great-looking movie. Uh, just some bad CGI, but that's okay. Yeah. It's not a big deal. You can't fault it for all the craft and all the talent that went into it. You know, honestly, I would give it like a seven out of ten. Like just on a basic filmmaking level, it's really well done. Yeah, I would probably give it a six point five. I mean, it had its moments. It's loads better than the first one. Yeah, loads better than the first one. That was a bloated mess. <laughs> the second one had a terrible cliffhanger. This one feels unnecessary like, cliffhanger. Uh, yeah, terrible unnecessary cliffhanger. This one felt like a, a, a standalone movie, I think, and it, straight beginning, middle, end, fine. I enjoyed it. I won't ever go back and watch it, <laughs> but I, I, I got my money's worth. Yeah, Battle okay. of the Five Armies, and um, you know, people people are giving it a, a lot of really harsh criticism. It's nothing to get upset about. I, I do have a question, though. The five armies? Yes. Well, let's name those five armies for, uh, our, for this audience real fast. There were there were the dwarves. The, uh, the elves. The elves came the, into play. The villagers. The villagers. The orcs. What was the fifth one? That's four. Uh, I think it was the audience. Was... Probably the audience. Ah, uh, yes. The audience. 
audience because we were battling just to fight through the movie, I some, think. Some people were fighting to stay asleep, so that was a bad one. <laughs> stay awake. Stay awake, yeah. yeah. Um, I don't know. Go check it out if you have the chance. Uh, if you like the other Hobbit movies, why not watch it? It's fine. You will you won't be disappointed. Yeah, you, you got to finish the story. I mean, you can't just go on without finishing the third one. Thank you for watching HCC Movie Makers Academy Movie Reviews. We're brought to you by HCC TV and the Houston Community College Filmmaking Program. If you like this video and you want to see more, then click on the link below, subscribe, and we will give you more alerts to reviews just like this one. Thank you very much, and we will see you next time.